President Trump has reluctantly signed a bill imposing penalties on Russia over for its policies in Ukraine and alleged intervention in the U.S. presidential election last year. Following that, he slammed the measure, claiming that it infringed on his ability to negotiate foreign policy and harmed the interests of European partners. According to the corporation that provided the voting machine for Venezuela's disputed constituent assembly elections, the turnout count was exaggerated by at least one million people. Prosecutors should launch a criminal probe right away, according to the Speaker of the Opposition-Controlled National Assembly. Exercising is similar to fertilizing your brain. All of those hours spent working out your muscles generate dense capillary beds not only in your legs and hips, but also in your brain. More blood arteries offer more oxygen and nutrients for your brain and muscles to function with. You force more nerve cells to fire as you pedal. As a result, you double or treble the production of these cells therefore doubling or tripling the size of your brain. You also release neurotransmitters, messengers between brain cells, so that all of those cells, new and old, can communicate with one another and perform better and faster. That's a significant advantage for riders. This type of development is especially crucial as we become older, because our brains shrink and our connections weaken. The brain cells are restored and protected by exercise. Kenya's election commission announced just a few minutes ago that incumbent Uhuru Kenyatta had won Tuesday's presidential election. The opposition, which has accused the results of being rigged, has rejected them. The process, according to an opposition spokeswoman, is a charade. The verbal spat between Washington and Pyongyang over North Korea's nuclear program has alarmed world leaders. North Korea accused President Trump of bringing the country to the brink of nuclear war after he said the U.S. military was locked and loaded. Russia, China, and Germany have all urged restraint and continued diplomatic efforts.
The average price of a gallon of gasoline in the United States touched $3.27 this week. Despite the fact that prices generally start to fall around this time of year. That's the highest price in seven years, and it's nearly double what it was last spring, when the COVID outbreak left roads and runways nearly empty. The price of gasoline is made up of numerous factors transportation costs, as well as federal and state taxes, the cost of refining it as well as the profits made by gas companies, all play a role. But the price of the crude oil from which gasoline is made accounts for 43% of the total cost of gasoline. Not coincidentally, crude is also at an all-time high. The United States claims to have made headway in addressing some of the shipping issues that have clogged the worldwide supply chain. That chain is not under the jurisdiction of the government. Although the Biden administration is largely made up of private port operators, trucking companies, railroads, and warehouses, it is supporting a plan for the Port of Los Angeles to operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week and for large companies like Walmart, Home Depot, and UPS to ship more goods at night. The Port of Los Angeles in California is one of the busiest ports on the planet, with 40% of all containers shipped to America passing through it and the Port of Long Beach. George Bush Sr. and his son, George W. Bush, both previous Republican presidents of the United States, have urged Americans to reject racism and anti-Semitism. It's being interpreted as a response to Donald Trump's remarks regarding who was to blame for Saturday's skirmishes in Charlottesville. When Mr. Trump accused both anti-racist protesters and white supremacists, he generated outrage. Heather Heyer, a protester, was slain. Her mother claimed at her burial service that the killer intended to silence her daughter but ended up amplifying her. President Donald Trump has announced the elimination of two advisory committees comprised primarily of prominent corporate executives.
The government of Catalonia, a Spanish territory, has refuted a claim by Madrid's federal authorities that the jihadist entity behind two attacks in Catalonia had been dismantled. Joaquim Forn, the Catalan regional government's interior minister, said Catalan police were leading the investigation and that detectors were still looking for at least one person. The Spanish authorities have detained Doan Akonli, a German-Turkish writer, at Turkey's request. Mr. Akonli, a critic of President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, has written extensively about Turkey's human rights record. Turkey's international arrest warrant was issued on unknown reasons. The United States Agency for International Development, or USAID, recently announced additional funding to help Nigeria achieve the goals specified in a Bilateral Development Objectives Assistance Agreement inked in 2015. A grant of $25 million will help state governments increase their efforts to fulfill Nigeria's Open Government Partnership pledges to improve transparency and fight corruption. The U.S. President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, better known as PEPFAR, will provide an additional $1.5 million to support a healthier, more educated population in designated states, for a total of $26.5 million in additional assistance. The United Nations Security Council issued Resolution 2375 last year in an effort to persuade the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, also known as North Korea, to abandon its nuclear weapons program. The United States is committed to enforcing this resolution. Members of the United Nations Security Council, and by extension all UN member nations, have unanimously committed to properly enforce sanctions against North Korea, and we expect them to keep their word, said Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. In a few weeks, heavy rains are forecast. Before the monsoon season comes, aid organizations are trying to shore up weak houses and stabilize unsteady terrain. The United Nations Refugee Organization, UNHCR, 
says the task ahead is massive, but preparations are off to a stronger start this year than they were last year. Last year, aid organizations had to deal with a tremendous influx of more than 740,000 Rohingya migrants escaping Myanmar's violence and persecution. They arrived over a few months, putting a strain on local resources and necessitating massive humanitarian aid. Face awaited the results of an election billed as a restoration to democracy but widely viewed as a ruse by Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha to strengthen his military's grip on power. With 93% of ballots counted, the military backed Phalang Prasharat party was in the lead with roughly 7.6 million votes, short of the number needed for a majority in parliament, according to preliminary official figures revealed late Sunday. With 7.1 million votes, former Prime Minister Vanessa's Few Thai Party came in second. Vote buying suspicions dogged the campaign, that on election day, election observers from Australia, Canada, the United States, and the 10 members of the European Union heard few complaints. Any demands or changes in the body's internal and external surroundings cause stress when the external environment changes, such as temperature, pollution, humidity, or working circumstances, stress results. In these days of competition, when a person makes the decision to surpass what others have accomplished, resulting in a demand resource imbalance, it produces psychosocial stress. It is an unavoidable element of daily existence. Depending on where you are in life, stress has a distinct meaning. A youngster may experience stress shock as a result of the loss of a toy or a parental rebuke. If a teenager fails an examination, he or she may believe that all has been lost. In an adult, the loss of a companion, a job loss, or a professional failure may appear to be the end of the road. Doctors are experts when it comes to prescription drugs. Go for two quick walks and call me in the morning, says the narrator. However, for many people, a light get moving regimen may be exactly what the doctor ordered. Many of us aren't in the best of physical shape. 
However, a huge proportion of people are deconditioned. According to Michael Joyner of the Mayo Clinic in an essay published in the Journal of Physiology, when people try even little exercise after surgery, illness, pregnancy, or extended inactivity for any reason, they may feel faint or exhausted. These signals, according to Joyner, should be recognized by clinicians as a medical state of deconditioning that might be better assisted with gentle, supervised exercise rather than as symptoms that should be treated with medicines. Global warming may appear to be a botanical blessing. Milder temperatures, as well as more carbon dioxide and nitrogen, could benefit flora. However, a 10-year study indicated that any initial benefit from climate change on plant growth may be short-lived. The study was published in Nature Climate Change. Four grassland ecosystems were relocated to lower, warmer elevations by researchers. Based on revised rainfall estimates, they also changed the precipitation at the transplant sites. The plants performed admirably the first year, producing more biomass and creating more oxygen for us. However, throughout the rest of the decade, they were less productive. What went wrong? The nitrogen cycle was sped up as a result of global warming, which should have boosted nitrogen availability as a plant fertilizer. Some fascinating details about the massive reptilian fossils unearthed recently in Wyoming and Colorado have surfaced. The bones discovered reflect reptiles of various sizes, ranging from a cat to a 60-foot-tall lizard. The latter, discovered in Wyoming's Como, belonged to the crocodile family, but the remnants show that it stood up on its hind legs like a kangaroo. Another was discovered in Colorado and was estimated to be 100 feet long. A large number of remains from the same broad class but different species have been collected and delivered east. Three to four hundred dinosaur specimens, as well as a thousand pterodactyls, have been transported from Colorado, Wyoming, and Kansas. One of the latter's wings measured 30 to 40 feet in length from tip to tip. In general, individuals underestimate how long it takes to discuss and settle a problem where two people originally have opposing viewpoints. The reason for this is because reaching an agreement needs people to accept the truth of opposing viewpoints as well as change or compromise. 
It's not as simple as presenting a set of facts and expecting the other person to instantaneously accept the logic of the argument. They, and, most likely, you, must be persuaded and assisted in feeling confident about the final conclusion. People require time to modify their attitudes, and any attempt to rush them into a decision is met with hostility. Indian retail chains have traditionally used mass marketing as an exception rather than the rule. One of the reasons for the retail sector's comparatively low attention to mass marketing in India is the lack of big companies with national reach. Because most retailers have not been focused in terms of their own vision for their retail brand, creating a concentrated brand image that leads to snappy, punchy advertising has been challenging. The majority of advertising has tended to emphasize the presence of locations or the range of products. Most traders intending to scale up operations have an innate expectation of a high short-term return on advertising spending, which is not conducive to long-term consistency in advertising direction. The focus of advertising then shifts to announcements of in-store specials and activities. Computer screens in the entrance of Google's Mountain View, California offices display lists of words typed into the company's search engine. Although Google claims that the system is designed to filter out any scandalous or potentially compromising queries, the fact that even a fraction of searches are visible to visitors to the world's largest search company is likely to surprise Internet users who consider web browsing to be a private affair. This could be changing. A succession of privacy blunders and government initiatives to get access to Internet users' online records, as well as consolidation among online search and advertising companies, have thrown the subject of Internet privacy into the forefront during the last year. Scientists studied how local chemical concentrations affect the electronic states of a molecule combining iron, tellurium, and selenium. They discovered that when the local concentration of iron is sufficiently low, superconductivity, conducting electricity without resistance, appears, along with distinct magnetic correlations. When the concentration of tellurium is sufficiently high, a coexisting electronic state existing only at the surface, topological surface state, appears. Their findings, which were published in Nature Materials, point to the composition range required for topological superconductivity. 
Topological superconductivity may make quantum computing more stable, allowing for exponential gains in processing capacity. Although race logic does involve a race, all of the truck drivers in this competition first drive in opposite directions. They race through all conceivable routes through the many intermediate delivery places to discover which path to the ultimate destination is the fastest. The NIST researchers created a novel circuit that starts with a set of time-encoded signals, each acting as a different driver that accelerates through the team's simulated hardware circuit. When a driver gets at one of her intermediate destination locations in the race, the model system sends out fresh drivers, new time signals, to the remaining destinations in different directions if a driver arrives at a location that has previously been visited by another driver, the latter drops out. <laughs> 